this time of year, there's something that makes me even more excited than seeing a big old tom on my trail cameras, and that's a hen with a bunch of poats. We've been seeing a lot of poats on our Moultries and in person here at the Proving Grounds too. And we did a little checking using the app, went back to last year this time, and we're seeing more poats than last year. Pretty good hatch last year, but we're on track to have a really good hatch this year. Now it's been a really rainy spring. It was rainy early on, then got dry. Now it's starting to rain again. And we've done some habitat work, but we're really starting from scratch here at the Proving Grounds too. But one thing we really did that I believe is making a big difference is last trapping season, we removed 139 nest predators, mainly raccoons, a bunch of possums, and a couple of skunks. 139 nest predators. We've shared this with you. When you take 139 critters off over 800 acres, well, that's a nest predator for a little bit over every six acres. We've been through this map before. You think about a hen, most hens lay about 10 eggs, one egg a day, so that's 10 nights on the ground for that oldest egg. Then the hen will incubate for about 28 days. This spring, it was raining a lot during that period of time. Mississippi State did research years ago, and they called that the wet hen theory. If you've ever harvested a tom when it's raining and threw it on your shoulder and carried it out, ooh, it's stinky. Wet turkeys have a strong odor. So that wet hen theory is the hens out feeding or sitting on a nest. It's really easy for predators to find that hen and destroy the nest. And then it's another 14 days if the eggs survive that gauntlet of predators before they're big enough to fly and roost off the ground, roost in a tree. So 52 days, those turkeys are extremely vulnerable for predation. To have a big hatch, there's not a lot of people talking about big hatches anymore. Matter of fact, the decline in turkey populations is widely talked about throughout the turkey's range. Man, there are all kind of podcasts anymore just about turkeys and talking's great, but doing something's even better and improving the habitat. Well, that's job one. We need nesting and brooding habitat, but even that, if you're in a high predator density area, which a lot of people are, boy, if you've got great habitat, but a predator every six acres, they're probably not gonna make it. And that's just, you know, mammal-based predators. Think about avian predators and snakes. There's a lot of things that likes a turkey egg for breakfast. We won't know how many of these are recruited because those little poults are still very susceptible to predation until next spring and we start seeing how many jakes we get out there, how many of those poults lived a year. They actually become big enough to be part of the population. You know, we don't count a whitetail fawn recruited, so to speak, into the population for statistical reasons until it's about six months of age. By six months, whitetail fawns are big enough to avoid many predators. Turkey poults, boy, they're really susceptible to predation, but they make it a year old, they've got a really good shot of being able to at least live through a reproductive cycle or two. We keep you posted throughout the summer, but boy, I get up most mornings and check my moultrie, watch antler development, and also excited to see those hens with poats out there. I count the poats, kind of look if they're in different areas or the same areas. If it's the same area, are those poats the same size or so I've been seeing, and is it the same number? And if it's different sizes, I know that maybe that hen re-nested successfully. So really cool to check those moultries out, see what's out there. And then while I'm working in the field, see and hear, hear that hen over there calling to the poach that maybe I spooked on the way in. All these cycles are a great way to understand creation and just really a great form of recreation for me. But understanding the creator, well, that's not just recreation. That's essential to us having a good life. And I encourage you to seek intentionally the creator's will for your life and act on it daily. Thanks for watching Growing Deer. Mm -hmm.